Hello everyone. If it's Tuesday, it must be Typewriter Tuesday. Today we're going to look at a Corona typewriter that has been sadly neglected in my home, sitting on a shelf. It was a gift from my mother-in-law and uh, it did not come with a case. This ordinarily would have come in a uh, carrying case, uh, but sadly that did not survive, which happens a lot with this particular model. Uh, it is, it was manufactured in 1924 based on the serial number. Uh, so 98 years old, the typewriter's in amazing condition for something that old. I'm sorry about the traffic going by. I've got the window open because it's a pleasant day. Except for the rain and the traffic. Um, sorry. Where was I? Corona. Um, Corona 3 typewriter. And I'm not certain if the 3 represents it's a 3 bank typewriter, meaning there are 3 rows of keys. Or that was just the next number in the sequence uh, from the standard folding typewriter company that later became the Corona typewriter. I'm not certain. I'll have to look into the history of that. But I know that the Corona 3 had a 3 row keyboard and the Corona 4 went with a 4 row keyboard. Now to fit all the characters you need in a 3 row keyboard you had to uh, do some um, creative engineering. Of course this was still early in the days of portable typewriters so they, the standard of what a typewriter keyboard should look like hadn't yet been precisely set finalized. So in this case, to get a capital letter, you would press the button here that says cap. And to get the um, characters that are above the uh, letters here, um, so numbers, and there's some special characters I want to I look at soon on this typewriter. But to get those numbers and punctuation and such that are above the letters, uh, there's a separate shift. It's like a double shift machine, so it raises the carriage even further so you can type the, uh, the number or the punctuation, whatever it is you're going for. So capital letter, punctuation or number, double shifted. It just saves space on the keyboard, but then each type slug has to have three characters on it. So depending on where the carriage is raised to, uh, the correct character on the type slug will then hit the platen, hit the paper, make your impression. So, 1924, uh, Corona Typewriter Company, Inc. Uh, Groton, New York, USA. And let's get a little bit closer here to look at some of the uh, interesting features of this particular machine. Okay, so I mentioned an, an unusual keyboard on this machine. And uh, this has, of course, the standard QWERTY, so that's not different. Uh, it has numbers above the letters here on the top row. That's pretty standard, not unusual. But there are some unusual, unusual for a typewriter, uh, mathematic symbols here. So on this key, for instance, we have uh, square root, we have percent, and I'm not sure if that's the underline. I'm guessing that's what that is. I should have typed it ahead of time so I'd remember what that represents. Uh, this key here, actually this entire row of keys. So the top row has numbers. The second row also has numbers, but these are superscripts. So if you wanted a number squared, we've got the superscript two, uh, cubed, etc. So all the way up through nine as a superscript. There's also a, a, it's not a zero, but a degree symbol. We've got uh, the pi symbol on the question mark key and division equals so this must have been special ordered or specially created for a um, maybe a math teacher or a, a professor of mathematics or maybe a math student, something of that character uh, with this special keyboard. I would assume would had to have been special ordered from the factory. Uh, but that's part of what makes this typewriter worth preserving. Um, it's got some condition issues. As I said, it was a gift from my mother-in-law. Uh, it arrived in this condition. I have not taken any uh, effort to do much to it other than wipe some of the dust off. Uh, it's been on display on my bookshelf. It looks really nice there, but sadly that um, exposes it to more dust 
and um, feline uh, confetti, let's say. So there's that. Um, one curious feature, I'm going to demonstrate here, I need to back up just a little bit, meaning I literally need to back the camera up to, to demonstrate this. This uh, Corona typewriter and the three before it were designed to fold up into themselves for storage and, and uh, carrying. So um, they inherited this from their predecessor, the standard folding typewriter. And so when you wanted to place it in the case and fold it to carry it to wherever you were going, it would fold just like that. Um, we'll look at that from another angle here in a minute. Also want to point out some of the interesting graphics on this, and I'll have to back up again. So here we have a curious uh, Corona emblem. Looks like a dove. There's a standard typewriter, and there's a feather. You can't see the entire thing, but it's the dove is apparently perched on or holding a balance, and there's a big standard typewriter on one side and a feather on the other, and they weigh about the same, hence indicating that the uh, Corona typewriters or L.C. Smith typewriters are very light indeed, which is arguable. This is a very light machine, but not quite feather light. Also here on the front of the machine is a better look, manufactured by Corona Typewriter Company, Inc. Grote, New York, USA. There's XC there. Not 100% certain what that represents. And here on the back of the machine, we have a series of patent dates. That ends in 1917. But again, this particular machine, based on the serial number, as I uh, looked up on Typewriter Database, uh, was manufactured in 1924. So let's just do a quick little tour around the typewriter. Uh, so here's the back side. And the uh, bell you can hear still operates. Here's the left side of the machine as you're facing it. And you can see the way the carriage flips forward to fold. Very clever design. A lot of the uh, workings here are exposed when you do that, which is tremendous fun. Have this little stunted return arm for the carriage. Also have some levers here to release the um, Feed rollers and of course this ratchets the platen forward as you return. We have these tiny little, much smaller than standard ribbon spools. A little bit of condition problem here. We've already looked at the front of the machine, but let's just look at that again. I do have a stock of ribbons on these small spools that were designed for printing calculators or uh, adding machines or something of that character. So I do have replacements for this. And then we'll look at the right hand side of the machine as you're facing it. Looks like there might be a missing screw here. I'm not certain. Or maybe that has to do with how it fits into the case. The backspace key is here by its lonesome. Still works. And everything's backwards when I do it this way. A little bit of cat residue in there I need to blow out with, with some compressed air. Uh, again, the paint could use a good uh, polishing. I just have brushed some of the dust off. And uh, other than that, haven't done anything with it. If this types after sitting on my shelf for a few years, I'll be amazed. But I'm going to, of course, try it. I have to. Again, I'm working around this awkward tripod, so I'll be slow typing it and one fingering it probably, two fingering it. Quick brown fox, you'll notice on this um, 
machine. There is a, only a um, carriage movement handle, roller handle. What am I trying to say? The roller handle is only on this side, not on this side. I don't think that's a defect. That's just the way they were made. Uh, the ribbon's not printing that well. Again, it's been sitting out exposed for a few years at least. Um, I'm going to type just a few. These special characters. sense of those. So again, the uh, typing was horrendous. The ribbon is not very dark. And uh, we got the regular numerals here. Some of the red ribbon is showing at the bottom of them. Maybe that needs lubricated so it raises the right amount. And then we see the superscript numerals here. And then pi, dollar sign, plus uh, can't even tell what that is because it didn't print very well. Oh, it's an ampersand and then a slash. So there you go. That's uh, its first workout in years after sitting on a dusty shelf with my books. And it'll probably go back there for a while until I feel confident enough to uh, give it a little restoration. But so 1924 Corona 4. Corona 3, sorry, folding typewriter. Um, thumbs up just for the historic nature of it, uh, for the unique keyboard. Um, worth having in my collection just for those things alone. Uh, ordinarily, I would want a portable typewriter to have its case or I wouldn't keep it, but I'll make an exception in this case because of the unique keyboard. Thanks for watching on this Typewriter Tuesday. Join me next time where um, trying a new thing, depending on what day of the week, we'll have different subject matter so you can kind of get a sense of the pattern and decide whether it's a video you want to watch or not. I appreciate every time you watch, every time you comment, join the conversation. Thanks for joining me today. Hope to see you here again next time.